everybody. Welcome back to the latest episode of the Westwood Living Podcast. Tom Lydon with you, joined today by Ariel D'Angelo. And this is a person who I met about a year ago and is the expert contributor in Westwood Living as our financial advisor. And that is a very important role in our publication because there are many people in Westwood who need financial advice. So first of all, hi, how are you? I'm well, thanks so much, Tom, how are you? I love your new spot here, which we will get into and we will explain how you landed here, which is right on Washington Street, Route 1A in Westwood. So nice and convenient, right down the street from Roach Brothers and the Muffin House and Orange Theory. So many different things that you can absolutely do here, but. Give me your thoughts on the association with Westwood Living and how you communicate with the people on a regular basis, sharing the knowledge that you've gleaned over so many years. Yeah, it's so important. You know, community is one of the biggest pillars of our company, and we really wanted to be a local financial advisor. We wanted to be a resource here just to connect with those that are in our backyard and be somebody they know down the street they can call. And if anything were to happen, you know, we're here for them, whatever they need. Your story is fascinating. I remember the first time I met you, which was last February, maybe early March, walking in. Honestly, the only way I can say this is like, I didn't notice anything different about how you walked or anything else. And then in the middle of the conversation, you're like, oh, so yeah, I fell off a horse and I broke my neck and I was paralyzed for a bit. I was like, excuse me? You kind of buried the lead. But just, do you want to tell that story a little bit so people sure. can understand your backstory and how it actually does morph into what you do for a living, which is, I don't know, convenient or coincidental? <laughs> no, yeah. Life is a funny way of you know showing up for you, I guess, in that way. But um, so my whole career before I was in the cor- I was in corporate finance my whole career. I then decided it made sense um, to leave with much uh, encouragement from my husband. Uh, And so after leaving though and starting my own practice, I had an accident. I was training horses and uh, I was thrown. I broke my neck. I ended up getting life flighted to Boston. I had a C5, C6 fusion. I was paralyzed from the shoulders down. They were fantastic there. After getting through surgery, they still weren't sure if I was going to walk again though. And that was a big big moment, I guess, especially, um, you know, with my husband, you know, being sitting there beside me and kind of getting that news too, and just processing it all. But I was like, absolutely not. Like I'm, this is, we're going. <laughs> After about five days in the ICU, they, I was finally able to, with the help of a uh, device, able to get up. They knew that it was going to be time and I might not walk normal, but I was going to walk again, which was awesome. And then I went to Spalding Rehab and I was there for a while, uh, about a month and learning how to relive everything. I had to relearn how to eat, walk, get dressed, brush my teeth, put on my socks, everything. That experience was um, challenging, not just from a physical standpoint, but from an emotional standpoint and from a mental standpoint when you have an invisible injury like a spinal cord injury like people can't see that you have blood pressure issues or the nerve damage which is excruciating and to anybody that has that on my condolences because it's hard to get through and stuff that i still have but i was absolutely not going to let that after my first week i was like nope i'm not going to just let this be my life i'm just gonna work hard and get back to where i wanted to be and pushed on every level and made that way, my way back. And the only way that I, the things I was most thankful for in that moment was that I had my estate planning done. I had insurance for my family. I had letters written to everybody a year prior in case something happened and I didn't get to say goodbye. And I never got to see my husband before surgery. Mm. And they're operating on my spinal cord. Like you don't know what's gonna happen. And it happens in a flash. Yeah. That all is so mesmerizing and magnetic. And yeah. it just brings people's attention, focus <laughs> to this is just an incredible story. And you briefly referenced it, but the importance of being prepared. And that's, to me, the essence of financial advisement. It's being smart, being strategic, but also understanding that this is hopefully for most of us a long play. And how do you maximize your finances? And when I, first of all, you talk so fast for me in this world. It's like you're such a professional in what you do. Sometimes you rattle things off. I'm like, okay, so she's speaking her language. <laughs> Let's dial that back a little bit and talk to the dumb people. Uh, I think that it's very evident that you know what you're doing. But give me your overview of why it's so important for somebody to think maybe how they don't think when it comes to their finances. You know, I'm, I've said this comment before when people have come to me and be like, hey, somebody told me this and that. I said, oh, great. Do you also go to your mechanic for medical advice? 
there's a lot. I mean, the depth of knowledge that you need in order to be a financial advisor is just crazy. And the, the breadth, rather, and the depth, you know, it's both ways. There's a lot to know. And that's why, you know, we have a team. It's not just me. You get an entire team uh, when you're working with us because you need people that are absolutely on top of everything that's going on from a national standpoint, on an economic standpoint on a what's going on in your personal life like you need somebody that knows you that knows your family because what's right for one person's not going to be what's right for the next and there's times too where we're calling people like hey you know because it's not just about preparing for the worst but it's also about creating opportunities for yourself and uh, even just a simple switch of the fact that most people call their emer- an emergency fund an emergency fund like we call it an opportunity fund and we want that funded beyond just the minimum amount of months of expenses that you need we want that funded to the point where should the market shift should something else come up you have money sitting ready to go to take advantage to help position yourself in a better way whether that's through something in the market or it's through real estate um, or something else entirely (laughs) off the off the beaten path you never know but i think beyond just like being prepared that way it's about living your life like we want to empower people not just to think about god forbid when the worst day happens but life's short like i i'll be the first one to tell you like this isn't a dress rehearsal you only get one shot at this you only get to live every age once and we should help to position everybody to just live the best life that they can Tell me about Nightingale, because this is a new brand for you. Yes. First of all, I love the logo. It jumps out. It reminds <laughs> me of the Hunger Games. You know what I mean? The, the last I forget what the last Hunger Games movie was, like Catching Fire or something like that. <laughs> but it reminds me of that. The Nightingale logo reminds me of that. But how did you fall under this Nightingale umbrella? How did this, You wanted to rebrand. Yeah. So um, as I mentioned, like we're a team, and as we were growing, I couldn't really just keep – marketing myself as Ariel D'Angelo financial advisor I needed to to you know create something that this whole team can grow out from under and so you know I thought a lot about it and uh the first night that I was in the hospital it was the worst night of my life and I didn't know if I was going to walk I was incapacitated on medication I was alone it's the middle of the night and they had just told me that visiting hours were over and they weren't going to let my husband up and they'd sent him home and I that's the first news I got coming out of surgery when they told me they promised me he was going to be there when I woke up and I was devastated so my surgeon he saw how upset I was he called and said get him back here I don't care and I was so out of it and it's so late and you're out of it on anesthesia and everything I couldn't hardly even keep my eyes open or talk but I needed to know he was there next to me so I asked him to open my kindle on my phone pull up the a book just read to me so I can hear your voice and the first book that he'd open which is the next one in my queue was Kristen Hannah's The Nightingale and just sitting there like listening to his voice read to me it was I have no idea honestly I had to reread the whole beginning of the book because I didn't remember anything he said but it was just the most comfort that I've ever experienced and it was such a profound moment And the nightingale bird in poetry and literature represents the relationship between life and death. And that's a lot like financial markets. It's cyclical. It's about families. So Nightingale Wealth Solutions is the brand we've come to because we don't just do financial advising. We don't just do wealth management. We also are offering estate planning as we're growing and some other services coming down the pipeline as well. Nobody who I have worked with in the last year is a better networker than you are. I mean, it has been remarkable to me to, and so I'm so grateful when I get a text message from you that says like, hey, you should connect with John. Hey, you should connect with Jill. I'm like, oh my gosh, fantastic. And I pick up that phone right away and I call that person because I'm like, Ariel told me to call. And when she tells me to call somebody, I do right away. So I'm very thankful for that. But you must see value in that power of connection and networking and getting out there and just broadening that network to enhance and grow your business. Oh, absolutely. I mean, my team laughs. Like I always say, I'm like, I'm looking for the Avengers. Like I want to know the best people in their field in every way. And I don't, and that's everything from mechanic to attorney to, and everywhere in between. I am literally just always out there looking for the best people so that I can refer my clients to those. Have you learned over the course of time to never judge a book by its cover? Someone who walks into your door could be a multimillionaire no matter what they look like. Uh, Do you know the vehicle driven by the most millionaires in America? 
No, I don't. It's a Ford F-150. Do you know the vehicle driven by the most people to go file bankruptcy? A Range Rover. Interesting. So uh, coming from a blue-collar family who had a lot of people who were in the trades and did phenomenally well for themselves and drove a pickup truck and wore jeans and boots every day, um, and also just being have my connections in the real estate industry of a lot of the people who have an insane amount of properties and this and that, developers, you know, you'll see them, same thing, rolling around in their truck and their Levi's. <laughs> and you've talked about going out to a conference in Las Vegas as well, right? And that's eye-opening. Oh, yeah. That was uh, the Masters Real Estate Conference in Vegas, and that's probably the most some of the wealthiest people in the entire country all sitting in a room together. And you'd never look at any of them a second glance at a bar and think, oh, that guy's loaded. <laughs> or girl. Crazy. So we're going to do a couple of different podcasts here over the course of the next few months. The next one's going to be marriage and money, which I think will be great because people could use that guidance because it gets complicated when you're talking to each other. How do you communicate? How do you handle your finances? How do those finances trickle down to your kids, your uh, financial obligations when it comes to education? It gets very daunting. And I think that your expert column about marriage and money was very good. But how do people find you in the interim if they're interested in learning more about you, your business, paying a visit maybe to your new office? Walk us through it. Absolutely. So you can go online to nwsadvisors.com. There you'll find our address, which is 384 Washington Street in Westwood, Massachusetts, right between Roach Brothers and Dunks on 1A. And you'll also be able to find us on Instagram and Facebook at uh, NWS Advisors. Well, there you go, folks. That's Ariel D'Angelo from Nightingale Wealth Solutions. And we will have more with her in future weeks as the Westwood Living Podcast continues. But for now, thank you so much for listening. And we'll check in with you later. Mm -hmm.